But anyway, I just want to give a little brief shout out to the Mahmoud and the Yale Edison. Everybody pointed out that their video has been on. I was wondering if you know, the sweat drop and everything. So make sure you guys are hiding on the spot and ready to go. So, uh, but shout out to everybody that's been working on the very video. Hi, good afternoon. This is this is Dr. Pearson. It's probably morning, but I, um, as an herbalist, I just want to be able to share with you some things about the immune system and how it is designed to protect us from everything foreign that we come in contact with. And if we have a healthy immune system, there's nothing that we have to be concerned with. Um, everything that comes in contact with us, whether we eat it, drink it, or if it gets on the skin, it is either scheduled for by the body, scheduled for assimilation and use, or it is scheduled for elimination. So again, I'm Dr. Pearson with Pearson's Herbs, and, and let's get right into it. And, and one of the things I want to share with you will be the part of the immune system. We can't get into all of it now. It's just too much. And also how we can naturally enhance our immune system by doing things that God has given us. Eight doctors that have, they don't cost us anything. So uh, we'll talk about those and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the herbal formulas that we can use to jumpstart our healing process or just to balance the system and, and, and cleanse it out. So let's, let's get right into it. Again, I thank the promoters for this opportunity. And I, I, I trust that you will have something that you can remember and say, yes, let me, let me do this. Let me start taking care of myself because I can tell I can tell you you can be happier, healthier this year, and you can do that naturally. Naturally. There's nothing that we cannot do naturally that will help us. Components of the immune system. There's the thymus, the bone marrow, the spleen, lymph nodes. Uh, all of these are part of the immune system. There's many types of cells that are part of the immune system, the lymphocytes, the platelets, T lymphocytes, all of these cells make up the immune system, the macrophages. And, and, and by the way, don't worry about trying to take notes or anything. Uh, there will not be a test. <laughs> there will be no test on this. You, you will, 
Uh, this is just to give you an appreciation of what God has done to keep us healthy. And a healthy immune system can take care of everything. These macrophages, they just engulf these macro uh, bacteria and get them out of the body. The NK cells, these are the green berets of our immune system. And they actually destroy virus infected cells. They can destroy them. The neutrophils, these neutrophils, they engage in chemical warfare. And again, there's 14 or so different types of cells that make up the immune system. And I just wanted to share a couple of these with you to show how fearfully and wonderfully we are made. This is stuff that's happening all the time in our systems. Uh, going through the blood, there's messengers that are looking to detect anything foreign and finding out what we can do to get rid of it. Now, to naturally enhance our immune system, let's talk about these eight natural doctors. And before I get into this one, let me tell you, the number one doctor is faith and trusting God. Give it to him. We have no power of our own. So please, let us put our faith and trust in God. That being said, let's use these other natural doctors that he has given us to keep our systems healthy. Fresh air. You can live without a lot of things for a long time. Air is not one of them. So let us practice filling our lungs full with oxygen and purifying the blood. Negatively charged ions in the air is great for us. And that is, you know, after a rain, go outside and breathe deeply, inhale deeply. Um, everything depends on your neighborhood now. You, you know, we want to keep ourselves safe. But fresh air purifies, destroys, or render inactive many, many types of bacteria, viruses, and other harmful substances. So inhale slowly through the nose and exhale slowly through your mouth. <clears throat> temperance. Well, we know about temperance. Temperance means keeping everything at a balanced level. You know, don't overdo anything and completely abstaining from those things that are harmful to us. And I don't need to get into what's harmful for you. Everyone knows what is good for you and they know what's harmful to you. Um, sunshine. We need 20 or 30 minutes of good sunshine every single day. This lowers the cholesterol, reduces our heart rate, increases the oxygen content of the blood. Get out in the sun. Very, very important. Benefits of moderate exercise. Now, this is an exercise program today and, and this weekend and so forth. So in addition to all of the other things, exercise improves the mobility of these neutrophils and other cells in the immune system that are running through the body trying to find and kill viruses and bacteria. I'm telling you, a healthy immune system, no problem. You're going to be okay. So get yourself some moderate exercise. Another one of the natural doctors that we can use that costs us nothing, unless you buy your water, <laughs> there is a little cost there, but we are all in some state of dehydration. So please drink your water. Uh, if you have to drink tap water, no problem. Boil it for 10 minutes, sit it off, let it cool, and then just pour off the top and drink that. Excellent water. The chemicals are gone, you know, gone up in steam and the heavy phosphates and the other things that may be in the other things in the water will have settled to the bottom of the pan. So you don't have to run out and buy the expensive waters to get good water. Uh, you can make it yourself by just boiling your water. All the cells in the immune system, they need water. And water has a lot of other properties, hot and cold showers. Uh, you know, if your blood pressure is awfully high, you can put your feet in a bucket of cold water. And what will happen is 
the body will say, we've got an emergency down here in our feet. And so the blood will rush down there to warm up that area. And in doing so, it will lower your blood pressure. Or you can get in a warm tub. The warm water in the tub will relax and it will um, relax your, your arteries and allow them to be more flexible and open and the blood will flow better, hence lowering your blood pressure. The hot and cold showers, that is one of the absolute best ways to build your immune system. Three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold. Do that three times. And I have been told um, that that is an excellent way to build the immune system. Now I'm okay with the three minutes hot. I'm just still working, still working, um, pray for me. I'm still working to get that 30 seconds of cold water. Um, but I can assure you it's good for you. I'm just not quite there yet. <laughs> oh, so, so please, let's get the water we need. And rest, the simple thing about rest is every, all of the healing that we do, that your body does, 90% of it is done between 8 o'clock at night and 3 or 4 in the morning. Those are the optimum hours for healing. And uh, the antibody response is cysts, natural killer cells, the T lymphocytes, all of these things work much better when we're getting good rest. And the last doctor we want to talk about is nutrition. For immune health, the best advice is to eat a well-balanced diet, high in fiber, low in fat, and rich in whole grains. In other words, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Let's go for the veggies. And there are some good fruits there. Let's combine all of them. But what we need to be aware of is that when you eat fruit, we need to eat that either before the meal or just by itself because fruit digests right away. And uh, we don't want the fruit hanging around in your 98 degree oven, you know, waiting for the mashed potatoes or some of these other things to be digested before it goes. So let's eat our fruit first and get that out of the way. Now, herbs. Again, being an herbalist uh, for the last 30 or so years, we have used herbs to stimulate the body's immune system, to give you extra nutrition. And there are immune system builders. And, and what we do is we put formulas together. We put four or five different herbs that are good to cleanse your blood, all the organs, special ones for the liver, special things for the kidneys, special things for the colon. And there are other special herbs that are immune system builders. So let's say, let's talk about the lung formula. Just for an example, in the lung formula, we use an herb called mullein, one called fenugreek, eucalyptus, recognize eucalyptus, L. campaign, and comfrey. Now, mullein, and this is how it grows, is good for bronchitis, inflammation, antispasmodic, coughs, breathing, issues of the lungs. Fenugreek is a good expectorant. It's a mucilaginous effect. Removes, removes mucus from the body. I, I'm telling you, there is a plant for everything. Eucalyptus is an antiseptic, so it's going to cleanse and, and kill bacteria and things that are good. It helps relieve upper respiratory distress. Good for lung diseases and, and bronchitis. That eucalyptus, L. campaign, that's a tonic. It's an antiseptic. So as you can see, these herbs, if we use them together, they are specific to help you to breathe better, to take care of all of those things that are going on in the lungs. Now, for instance, you, you know, have a thyroid issue. The thyroid is an organ that primarily uses iodine. It uses other things. And so in our thyroid formula to help build up the thyroid, we use kelp, parsley, Irish moss, watercress, and black walnut. Uh, the kelp has many vitamins and minerals, minerals, and it has those trace minerals that you can only get from the ocean. 
So that is a, a good thing to have in there. The watercress, also rich in minerals, vitamin C, iron, and it has naturally occurring iodine. So these types of herbs are the ones we put together to enhance the thyroid. Prostate formula, cleavers, gravel root, and you may have heard of salt, palmetto berries, that's a popular one, university, echinacea is popular, but the you, you, university, it's an astringent, a diuretic, an antiseptic. The leaves are used. Relieves pain from cystitis. Good for chronic urinary problems. Relieves excess bloating due to water retention. And this is what the uva ursi berry looks like. Cleavers, that's a special one. It's excellent for the health of the prostate. The uh, gravel root, specific, and exerts a special influence upon the renal and, and cystic. In other words, your kidneys and your bladder. Excellent, excellent herb. And salt palmettos, we know that it's a tonic and also tones and strengthen the reproductive system. And it's used, you know, to shrink those enlarged prostates and infections. So men, that's what we need. Uh, liver cleansers. I, it, so many things going on with the liver. The liver really is the engine for the body. Uh, chemical factory, I'll put it that way. So milk thistle, dandelion, barberry, that's a formula that we put together. And there are things in the milk thistle that are excellent. It stimulates the liver. It blocks the allergic and inflammatory reactions. Um, and this is what it looks like. You know, you just can't get around it. You know, if you, if you need, have a liver issue, you want to be sure to have you know, dandelion, milk thistle, and barberry to use to uh, jumpstart that liver to being better. That's dandelion. We all know about dandelion. The barberry, that is excellent, excellent for your liver. It's a liver cleanser. Helps the secretion of bile. It increases bowel functions. And it just strengthens the body. So these are some of the things that you want to use. Um, as, as herbalists, again, here's some herbs. For our colon cleansers, we use aloe, senna, and fennel, and they are excellent. The aloe stimulates that peristaltic action. We all know what aloe looks like. Senna, it helps to get rid of parasites, and we all have parasites. Vegetarians have parasites, so we all want to periodically use a parasite cleanser to cleanse our bodies. Cleans the colon and it has a laxative effect. Uh, the center, that's what it looks like. Now remember, we can significantly increase our quality of health well into our golden years by taking charge now. Now is the time to be aware of what types of fuel we are giving our systems to run on. We deserve the best. For more information, please contact us. And, and, and I would be happy to share my testimony with you. Uh, we, can, we can do consultations. You can go to the website, take a look at different things.
Congratulations, um, So, if you have a folding chair, I really recommend you locate a folding chair. Um, if you have a yoga strap or a belt, um, those are really helpful as well. And if you have a yoga block, um, that's super helpful. Um, and even uh, a blanket. Um, or a beach towel. Um, that is just as well. Uh, I have to go get that. I'm, gonna, I'm running a little early. Uh, uh, I'm going to go get that while I'm going to get the bathing to get. And then I'll introduce myself. So I'll be back in two and two for those that are going to be about this thing. Now you go to the Everyone back. Yep, I think we're ready to go. Okay. How come I can't get my screen? I only have these like four stars at the start. Mm-hmm. I don't know. 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 All right. So. Yes, sun is out. Um, so, uh, so that was almost right. I, I played basketball, uh, not football. I really kind of hoped to have played football, uh, but my, uh, my mother was mad at that. I didn't have my growth kit until after high school. So um, I grew about four, five inches after high school um, and then played in that. College, I was never grown up in the same place. Um, born and raised in Detroit, Southfield, uh, suburbs, and then uh, was in Detroit from uh, 2013 to uh, moved in 2018. And I miss it every day. I embody the spirit of Detroit. I remember uh, working with this guy at the Life Center for about the 80s. Uh, and that was so long ago, and so great in my mind. So, uh, that's a little bit about me. Um, my background is, uh, well, how I got into yoga, I should say, is um, while playing basketball, I've been here uh, 
series of really, really terrible uh, back injuries. Um, he brought forth, uh, hit from behind, and um, completely knocked him out. And he developed tiny little discs and spinal stenosis, and he took him out via spinal cord. Sciatica down both of my legs. I was on uh, a hot mess and a lot of pain, and then a lot of pain medication. Um, and, uh, and I was on that for quite a while until I really felt um, possibly hit rock bottom. And, um, and there was nowhere for me to go, so I was only up from there. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I connected with, with Spirit. I had a, a, a moment with, um, with, with, uh, with, the, uh, with the one and only, and then gave me a second chance to um, to do this uh, to do this the right way the second time around. So um, I went uh, a whole Eastern route uh, through acupuncture, um, Pilates, yoga was involved, uh, and I was uh, all over again properly. Um, and, um, and then through that, um, I wanted to touch on what the um, the young lady prior uh, was talking about with um, therapy and the therapy that can explain the map. And when we look at physical therapy, and, and, um, and yes, I need more of that, and then the mental therapy, we kind of don't get that as much credit or, or validity. And I'm here to tell you that even if you don't have anything going on with you, just like in physical therapy, what this practice is, um, which is called Frodo, is what I named it. Um, Force performance and recovery based yoga, but it's about preventative measures. So, we want to actually prevent the injury. And if you look at that in the, um, the, the brain and mind side of it, go to therapy even if you don't have to or need to, but to talk to someone that's not your loved one or someone that has a, an opinion of you, it's so healthy to kind of hear that feedback. So that's what this practice is about. It's a little different, a little unique in that um, I've studied uh, a lot since I've left. Um, I'm a crossroader, I'm in the and I work with companies just as far as the pandemic. And what I was seeing was a uh, complete dysfunction of the workplace environment and them working out it and how those two were not linking with one another. So people would struggle in my uh, my yoga classes or in my private sessions, and then I would actually go and see their workplace environment, and I the light bulb went off, and I saw where the dysfunctions were coming from. So I've learned a whole uh, mess of things that are really fascinating, and uh, I think we'll we'll, we'll get going. If anyone has any questions, uh, I can't see the chat, so I don't know what's going on. I'm not just reading. But unmute yourself um, and, uh, and, and scoot away. Otherwise, uh, how are we going to start at standing? So let's see if we can see me. I don't have a huge. Yeah, looks like you guys can see me great. So, if you have a beach towel or a, a blanket or a towel, what I want you to do is I want you to fold it up so you have a nice kind of ramp going up. Um, funny story about that towel. I got that towel I was uh, the Detroit Piston yoga trainer for uh, three seasons, and um, right before I moved, and uh, I made sure to take a, a souvenir. Um, so that's what that is. Take these guys off here. Okay, so you place the um, the, uh, the blanket or the towel on top of your yoga mat or whatever platform you have. And this is really interesting. What I want you to do is, I want you to step on it, but keep your heels on it and let the pads of your feet be flat onto the, uh, the floor or the ground. Okay? And what that's going to do is you'll feel you can have a little bit of a, a pipe like you have your high heels on. And that's because the heels of our body will represent the booty in the back. So we want to lift that up. That's why. Um, 
women, you know, who wear high heels such as essentially to elongate the, the, the leg, it also lifts and turns the butt. So this is a really interesting way to come into a forward fold. And instead of thinking about this as a um, as bending over, I want you to think about this with the imagination and the analogy that our bodies like a piece of paper and we're going to fold our bodies like origami. So everything has a fit. So our knees are going to fit into our armpits. Okay? So the first thing I want you to do is actually step off of the blanket now. And all I want you to do is take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, just fold your body forward. And just hang like a grape on a vine. You can hold on to your elbows if you want. And just kind of let the back of your neck relax. So we're going to do a little comparison. Do it this way, and then we'll do it the other way. Let's see this way. So uh, the knees, they represent the kidneys. So there's a bend into the knee, and it helps the kidneys to flush. And the, the, the kidneys are the way that we move water through the body. So when we lock our legs in a forward fold, when we lock our legs, it locks up that water system. And it, it shuts off the kidney. Similarly, um, so you can uh, standing up. When you sit down, and if you sit and you're slouching, you're crushing your kidney. And your kidneys are related to the adrenal gland, and they're like our battery. So it's so important, and this is what I'm referring back to when you're working at your desk or your seated, if you're not squishing your kidneys and slouching down, because not only is that bad for the back, it was also really, really terrible for the, uh, the internal organs. Specifically, what we're talking about is the kidneys right now. This is that. So you lose all of that energy, and then you can reach for all of the alternatives for those energy sources, the coffee, the Red Bull, and you feel like you need to get that energy. But it's always going to be depleted because you're squishing your kidneys. There's no flow of water. The filter is shut. Okay? So now what I want you to do is if you have a yoga block on, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your yoga block and put it right in between your thighs just like that. If it's a little uncomfortable in the width way, you can do it that way. Either way. Now, take a step on top of your uh, deep solid blanket so your heels are a little higher and the pads and feet are firmly rooted on the ground. Okay? Now this time, remember, soft bend to the knees. Now I want you to think about doing a karate chop right at your hip feet. Stick your butt out, lift your chest up. So your pubic bone, your navel, and your sternum are all going forward, and your booty is going back. So you're moving in two directions. If you come into a forward fold, try to keep your butt lifted. So don't drop your butt when you fold, but push your butt up as you fold the body forward. And make sure you fit into your armpit. Take a look at that. And bend into those knees as much as you need to. Because that's important that you get that fit. Each of our bodies fits our own body personally. We're not trying to fit anybody else's body but our own. So your knees will fit your own hips, I promise you. And you can even place the hands underneath your feet so that the toes are into your wrist piece if you want to. It's a little ambitious, but if you want to, just try to think about now, you're lifting your buttons up towards the sky, and you're dropping your heel bones further towards the ground. So you get this moving in two directions, and you feel that back of your body and those tense is really activated. So that comes from the Achilles, the soleus, the calves, the hamstrings, all the way up to the booty, the glutes. Grab a hold of your opposite elbows, so you create a frame. Now take your chin away from your chest and look straight out ahead of you. And holding on to your elbows, lift your arms to the top of your ears. And as you start to lift your arms to the top of your ears, keep your back long and hinge at the hips and come all the way back up. And holding on to those elbows so you have this nice frame like a window, bring them down. And you inhale, bring them up. So this is like, um, we use the analogy of our body as like a hull, right? This is like opening up the windows in your house so that you get a fresh bit of breeze of air. So folding from here, and bringing it down, and bringing it up. 
And what's really nice is as you hold on to your elbows, you can actually press in your elbows and squeeze your shoulder blades away from each other to be straight with boundaries. And then you feel that opening in your shoulder blades. And then we're going to take a stretch over to the side and take your uh, chin to your left armpit and then up. And then Shift over to the left, put your chin into your right arm, and then lift up. And then come back to the center. Good. And then move. Like that. You can place your, your flat down. And then for the second thing, we're actually going to use our chair. So you can take a seat on your chair. Interestingly enough, you can still use the, um, the blanket on your heel to create that little, little blanket. This is what I um, suggest for my clients uh, is that, hey, you want your hips to be a little higher than your knees, okay? So when you sit, you don't want like this perfect 90 degree angle. Make the hips a little bit higher so you're already in that bit of a hold. But you want to get your butt all the way to the back of the chair and then sit up. Okay? Let me give you a side view of what's really nice to you with the yoga block. Is that you create those boundaries. The boundaries are fantastic. Boundaries let us know where we can go and where we should go. So, as you can see, you place the block right there, and then you have this nice, natural curve back in your spine, so it's impossible to slouch. You see how impossible that is to slouch? It actually prevents you from slouching. So your butt behind you, your pubic bone, your navel, and your sternum is in front of you. So that would be 12 o'clock, what's behind you is 6 o'clock. Your right hip is going to be at 3 o'clock, and your left hip is going to be 9 o'clock. So everything that we did standing, we actually do speed it. And what's so fascinating about that is that the mechanics of sitting and standing are so important, and we're not taught it. So it's either kind of uh, trial by error to figure it out, we never experience pain, or we're always in pain and we don't know what to do. So I feel very strongly about just being a remedy and a solution of it when you're complaining and you're in pain, and you don't know where it came from. Look to your feet to start with, right? So your heels are on top of the blanket, so you have that bit of a lift, right? Now it's going to be so much easier. You butt behind you. Now come over and just go and turn it and move into the knee pit. And reach your arms out in front of you. Now try to keep yourself organized here, like you're still maintaining your hips at 3 at 9 o'clock. Two of them to 12 o'clock, and you have to see your butt on your face. It's 6 o'clock behind you. Okay? Now, if I told you to walk your hands over towards 2 o'clock, try not to move your hips, the orientation of those anyway. So, to move the upper torso, you get the hips stretched to the left side of your body, right past into the QL, the side of the, the body muscle in your oblique, come back to the center, and then over to the left. We can for 10 o'clock. So a lot of our back injuries and, 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 and tightness comes from that low back, but it's really more of the QL, the quadratus and bore muscle on the side of our body. And I learned that when I was in my back injury and how dysfunctional it was. That and the psoas, which we'll work on next. Come back to the center. Now, keep your knees in your armpit, hold on to your elbows. Exactly what we did before. Turn up. Lift the elbow and then hinge at the hips and lift all the way back up. So there's going to be this moment of transition, guys, where once you start to lift, press your feet down, and then you come all the way up to standing. And then you come all the way back. Lift up. All the way back. So you really want to feel your butt and the back of your muscles using, doing the most of the work, not your quadriceps in the front of your legs, 
that's not where you want to feel most of this, uh, the, the, the fire of the muscle. And why this is so important is because in yoga, we have a pose, ironically, it's called chair pose. Okay? So, you come up your seat now, and now we're going to go into chair pose. So, we call that Uttakasana in yoga, if you say that. But simply put, it's just chair pose. And uh, before we move any further, I want to teach you hip distance. So, there's two ways that you can find hip distance. You take your two fists just like that. And you place them in between the arches of your feet. And that's a good indicator of hip distance. You want your feet pointing straight in front of you. Keep your heels out just a little bit. And that's going to lift your arches up. So if you have flat arches, if you look down at my feet, I have really terrible arches and feet. And that's why everything else up the chain is always dysfunctional. Now, I became super aware of my feet. Because that was a lot more proprioception from the foot all the way up to the brain, and things became a little easier as I got older. Second way to find hip distance, and this is a really, really good one internal rotation. So, this is my right hip. I'm going to internally rotate my right hip and take the big toe and find the inside of the left heel. So, you take it to the right angle. And then you're going to cross reference your work so all of you. English majors and people who are getting into aspects of the right? So you go back and forth, and you get that hip distance. Okay? Now, bending into the knees, you don't ideally want the knees to go past the toes, but they can be right in the middle of the feet to the heel. And then the butt is behind you, keep it going, navel turn is in front of you, and then you lift your arms up. And you can start to sink your butt down, but you don't want your quads to burn. If your quads are burning, you got to move back into the heels more. And if you move back into the heels, ground your uh, of your feet down to the ground. And that's where, if you have a blanket, like I said before, and you lift your heels up, you can actually really feel how what we're going to do now is cross reference the heel bones and the butt bones. So if I press my right heel butt bone down to the ground, I'm lifting my left butt bone up towards the sky. Okay? And then if I press my left heel bone down to the ground, I'm lifting my right butt bone back high to the sky. So we cross reference and find our center. The center of the foot, center of the knee, center of the hip, center of the shoulder, all through the center, and then eventually we do a thing to it. Okay? And here's a great one. While we're in that chair pose, remember, you don't want the quads to burn before your booty comes. Uh, uh, I like that. You want the bone before the touch. Take your left foot, bring it to your right foot, so you get that nice and low. You can use all the time. The lower you go, the better the person you are. And that's an absolute good. Now bring your hands into your heart into prayer. You're going to take your left elbow and twist over your right back. But remember, try not to use your hips. You want to rotate through your torso. And then you can look up to the right, or even the back. And this is going to ring out those kidneys and the internal organs. Take your step to your left foot back, come all the way up to standing, and then internally rotate. Reset your work. Come back down to the chair. Bring your right foot next to your left foot, hands into the heart, right elbow, put it over the left side. Nice deep breath into the nose. Out the nose. And then come back up. Arms down by the side. Shake it out. Good, good, good. All right, we're doing good. Let's take our yoga strap or the other belt. You can jump right with it. So I do, I sell these on my, uh, my website. These are 10 foot and they have these super strong clips. I highly recommend you get one of these yoga straps with the clips. There's so many. So many amazing exercises you can do with the clay. And I'm just going to show you a great one for a posture. So, you take the strap behind your back. 
and then you pull these guys out. Okay? So it's kind of like you're doing a uh, lacing up your shoes, if you will. I'm going to give you a back view. Swing the strap over the back, just like so. Okay? Now, what you do is crisscross with the top. You guys see that? It's going to create a triangle right in the center. And what you do is you pull straight down, and it's almost like you're skiing. You're going to feel your shoulders back to the ground. Right here with the right shoulder. Come down. Come up. So nice. Now, what you can do is, you may have seen this um, on a lot of, uh, this is called, you know, like a, a posture pressure or a back pressure, but with this, you just clip it like that. And as you can see, it really is so hard to go into too much. Uh, except the flexion or, or that slouching. So you can kind of catch yourself when you're slouching over while you're working in the desk. So I have a lot of my, my clients do this and they, and they really love it um, as much as I do as well. So uh, let's review the forward pull because if there's one thing I want to share with you at the end of this practice today, and um, why it's called chair pose is because it's originating from a chair. Oh, let me tap into this one before I go into that. So if you do have your folding chair, fold it up. This one is super cool. I think they're all super cool, but this one happens to be like so absolutely beneficial. Okay? So what you do is you take the bottom of the chair, and you wedge it into your uh, hip crease right above your cubicle. Just, yeah, you don't want to be on your cubicle because that's just uncomfortable. Okay? Now, before we go any further, just measure up hip distance so you have that right angle. Uh, coincidentally, uh, internal rotation helps to open up the back. So a lot of us have external rotation of people shooting out this way, it shuts off our back. So anytime you can go into internal rotation, super helpful to keep the mobility in the uh, the hip joint. Okay, now place that guy right in your hip crease. Reach for the top. Now take a look at my back and how long and tall it is with this natural curve. So I go back and then I come into a forward fold, and then I just hang. For some of you that still have to be on the ground, I hunch your face. So what I do is I'll place a, a block right here so that it has like a bit of resting, and then I think it's really coming to the next space. And then when I want to come out of it, if you take a look, I'm going to come out, I'm going to push and come all the way out so that my two bones are 12 o'clock, it's an extension of that chair, my booty is behind me at 6 o'clock, my hip is uh, to the right at 3, and my hip to the left is at 9. Isn't that fun? Cool. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, re- reviewing the forward fold. Step back on your blanket or your towel. Two fifths, hip distance. Now you can feel your knees into your armpit. That's a good thing. Now the trick is, once you knees into your armpit, don't let your butt drop. So we don't want to go into any kind of squat. They still want to lift their butt up higher. That's your butt lift right there. Hold on to your elbow. Take the chin away from the chest. Lift up. Hinge at the hip. And come all the way up. It should feel just like you have that chair. You just keep practicing that, guys. That, that is so important. Um, so... If anyone has any questions or wants to uh, reach out uh, with um, working with me further, my website is Stroga, S-T-R-O-G-A dot com. And um, I'm also on uh, Instagram 
bit how I scroll that. There's, um, yeah, that's probably the best way. How I scroll this, scroll it out. And I'm happy to, um, answer any questions or if you guys one on one to, uh, anything I talk to them. But this is very, very, there's a lot of, external noise around what works and what doesn't work. But personally, what has worked for me and, and doing my best is this method uh, throughout the year. And just finding that really good recipe so every time you make that batch of cookies that comes out perfect, you don't have to play around with it. It's really simple. And the more simple, the tastier it is, and the more confident you can every time you go to it, Will be, uh, will be in a, a better uh, state in our mind, in our body, and in our spirit. So, uh, thank you for the If any of you have any questions, uh, you can feel free to reach out. We uh, have uh, a litter of mosquitoes on it. We can find it. So, no one has any questions. I will pass along to the next person. Thank you guys so much.